Hey guys, it's Miss Miller again, and we are going to read The Grassland Habitat by Kelly McCauley and Bobby Common. And today we're going to focus on the vocabulary in this book. What is a habitat? A habitat is a place in nature. Plants live in habitats. Animals live in habitats too. Some animals make homes in habitats. Living and non-living things. There are living things in habitats. Plants and animals are living things. There are also non-living things in habitats. Rocks, water, and dirt are all non-living things. Everything they need. Plants and animals need air, water, and food to stay alive. They have everything they need in their habitats. This ground squirrel found food to eat in its habitat, a habitat home. Some animals have homes. Their homes are in their habitats. This badger's home is under the ground. The badger sleeps in its home. So I want you to take a moment and think about what is a habitat. All right, now let's go back and look and see what the author tells us what a habitat is. So we can go back in our book and reference this. So we go back one page and it says a habitat, right here it says a habitat is a place in nature and plants live in habitats, animals live in habitats too. So if we're asking ourselves, what is a habitat? You say, okay, a habitat is a place in nature that animals and plants live. Let's keep reading. Grassland habitats. Grasslands are habitats. They are open, flat areas of land. Many plants grow in grasslands. Most of the plants are grasses. There are very few trees in grasslands. This book is about grasslands called prairies. Prairies are found in Canada and the United States. Plants and animals live in the prairies. These bison live in the prairies. Now take a moment to think about what the word grasslands. Think about what that is. What is a grassland? Take a moment. Grasslands are habitats. They are open, flat areas of land. Many plants grow in grasslands. Most of the plants are grasses. So let's think about what a grassland is. So after reading that section again, I can tell you that a grassland is a habitat that's open and flat and it has lots of grasses, but it doesn't have a lot of trees. Prairie weather. There are four seasons in the prairies. The seasons are spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Strong winds blow in the prairies in every season. This deer is resting on the prairie grass in the spring. Changing weather. Weather in the prairies changes as the seasons change. Spring is warm, some rain falls, summer is hot, many prairie plants grow in the summer. Autumn is cool and prairie plants begin to die. Winter is cold and snow falls on the prairies. Prairie plants. Most prairie plants are grasses. The grasses are often tall. They sway in the wind. Flowers grow on some prairie plants. Daisies and purple cone flowers are prairie plants that have flowers. Long, strong roots. In prairies, there are no hills to block the wind. How do plants stay in the ground? Prairie plants have long roots. The long roots grow deep down in the ground. The roots hold the prairie plants in place when the, as the wind blows. Now take a moment and think about what, after we've read these couple pages, what is a prairie? Think about that. What is a prairie? And I'm going to go back in the book so you can look at it. 
what are prairies? So the author tells us that this book is about grasslands called prairies and that prairies are found in Canada and the United States and plants and animals live in the prairies. So what I could say is prairies are a type of grassland that plants and animals live in. All right, let's keep reading. Plants make food. Living things need food to stay alive. Plants make their own food. They use sunlight, air, and water to make food. Making food from sunlight, air, and water is called photosynthesis. Parts for making food. Plants get sunlight through its leaves. It also gets air through its leaves. The plant gets water through its roots. The plant uses sunlight, air, and water to make food. So you can see in this diagram right here, that, or in this picture, that the water go, goes in through the roots, and then the leaves take in air, and then they also take in sunlight. Prairie animals. Many animals live in the prairies. They find food in the prairies. They also find places to live. Which prairie animals have you seen before? Prairie water. There are streams flowing through prairies. Streams have shallow moving water. Shallow water is not deep. Fish swim in the streams. This mink caught a fish to eat. Now I want you to pause there and think about the word shallow. You might have not known about this word before you read, before we read this book. But guess what? The author even tells you what shallow means. Because it says streams have shallow moving water. Shallow water is not deep. So what is shallow? It's not deep. Think about it like this. Whenever you go to the swimming pool, maybe in the summer... There's a deep end and there is a shallow end. And I bet that you all are swimming in the shallow end because it's not deep. Prairie potholes. In prairies, there are wide holes filled with water. These holes are called prairie potholes. Prairie potholes have shallow water. Bush rush, bulrushes and reeds are plants that grow in prairie potholes. Pothole animals. Many birds live around pi prairie potholes. Ducks and geese live around prairie potholes. The birds swim in the water and they eat plants that grow in the water. Using water. Many other animals visit prairie potholes. They drink the water. They eat the plants in the water. Animals walk in the water on hot summer days. The water cools off their warm bodies. This elk is cooling off in a prairie pothole. Finding food. Animals must eat food to stay alive. Some animals are herbivores. Herbivores eat only plants. Prairie dogs are herbivores. They eat grasses. So herbivores only eat plants. That's the only thing they eat. They don't eat any meat. Meat eaters. Some animals are carnivores. Carnivores eat other animals. Badgers are carnivores. They eat prairie dogs, ground squirrels, and birds. So while a prairie dog only eats plants and is an herbivore, this badger right here eats other meat. So it's a carnivore. Eating many foods. Some animals are omnivores. Omnivores eat both plants and other animals. This red fox is an omnivore. It eats fruit, mice, and rabbits. Now, if you think about it, let's take a moment to think about, are we an herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore? That's right, we're an omnivore because we eat meat and vegetables and plants. So we eat salads, carrots, fruit, but we also eat 
chicken, beef, fish. So we are an omnivore. Getting energy. All living things need energy to grow, to move. Energy comes from the sun. Plants get energy from the sun, and animals must eat other living things to get energy. A rabbit is an herbivore. It gets energy from eating grasses. Energy for carnivores. A carnivore, like a hog, gets energy by eating other animals. So this hog is a carnivore, and it gets its energy by eating a rabbit. Underground homes. Some prairie animals dig homes under the ground. Prairie dogs dig underground homes called towns. Towns have many rooms. The rooms are joined by tunnels. Ground squirrels also dig large homes. The squirrels run into their own to their homes whenever other animals come close. So towns are the homes to prairie dogs. They are underground and they have little tunnels and that lead into rooms. So this is just their version of their home. They have many rooms and tunnels. Safer at night. Some prairie animals come out of their homes only at night. It's safer for the animals to come out at night than it is for them to come out during the day. In the dark, the animals can hide more easily from other animals. This black-footed ferret comes out at night. Night mice. Grasshopper mice sleep during the day. They sleep in homes under the ground. They wake up and come out of their homes at night to look for food. They eat mainly grasshoppers and other mice. Hard to see. Some prairie animals are hard to see, even during the day. This ground squirrel has stripes on its back and head. The stripes look like long grasses. Other animals may not see this ground squirrel standing in the grass. The same color. This bobcat has brown fur with dark spots. The grasses around the bobcat are also brown. Then there are dark spots in the grasses. So the bobcat blends in with the grasses. That is the end of our book. So now I want you to go and watch my video of me creating our vocabulary anchor chart. And I'll tell you what to do from there, okay?